In this video, I'm going to show you the basic AnyConnect client configuration for the ASAV. Essentially, we're going to turn an ASAV into a VPN concentrator. Here is the lab topology that we're going to be working from. We have an MX that will be our perimeter firewall, the ASAV that's sitting inside our network, kind of like in a DMZ, and then we have a 3850 as a core switch in our environment. The process we're going to follow is we're going to first deploy the ASAV into VMware, leveraging the OVA. Then we're going to configure SSH access, upload the AnyConnect package, configure the ASAV for AnyConnect config, and then we're going to set up outbound access or kind of talk through that. I'm going to put this config in my blog post so you guys can just copy it out and modify it. But what I've already done is I configured and deployed the ASAV into VMware. I set up an inside and outside interface and tied those to VLANs in VMware, leveraged the OVA from Cisco.com. In order for us to get SSH access, I went into the console of the ASAV and I set up the outside interface config, the inside interface config, set my host name, username, and password, set up crypto access, SSH access, as well as routing policies. So a default route out, our outside interface, and then routes to our inside network. So we're now on our ASAV. Do a quick show IP address. You can see our inside and outside interface configuration. What we've done here is we've set up this, We our outside interface is in VLAN 1 and the 192.168.1. VLAN 30 is gonna be our VPN subnet, so inside outside interface. Next, we're going to copy the AnyConnect client package to the ASAV. That package includes install for Windows, Mac, the umbrella package, and a few other things inside of that package. It's kind of a root-based package that you can download from Cisco.com. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that via TFTP here. So I've placed the AnyConnect package on my TFTP server and I'm now copying this package over to my ASAV. If you need me to show you how to set up a TFTP server, you probably shouldn't be watching my video right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pause the video while this package uploads and then we'll go from there. So next we're gonna set up our routing for our VPN clients. So if I'm a VPN client, I connect to my ASAV as my concentrator. But from there, we're not gonna set up split tunneling because we wanna send all the traffic back for inspection. The traffic hits the ASAV, where do we go? So we need to create a routing statement so we have this scenario. I come in through VPN tunnel and then I'm redirected out to my perimeter firewall. So to do that, we need to leverage this rule here, route inside, and we're saying this is our default route, and then this is sending all of our traffic to our core. This tunnel command is key because we already have a default route in our ASAV to send our traffic outbound. We need to make sure that we send our VPN traffic that's going outbound to the core so that it can then be sent out the perimeter firewall. So we're gonna copy this command here. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our object groups for our VPN client. So what subnet is our VPN client that live on? And then we're also gonna set up a DHCP pool. You can create your own DHCP pool on the ASA or you can put that on a remote server. And then here we're going to enable the web SSL and we're also going to point any connect to the package that we uploaded. The next thing we're gonna do is build out our group policy and the group policy defines VPN attributes like DNS server, domain name, and things like that. So we're gonna copy this out. Again, you guys can copy this right off of my blog. Split tunneling if you wanna set that up. And then we're gonna put in the tunnel group config. The tunnel group is kind of the core of the VPN config, we're pulling in the group policy, we're pulling in our address pool and things like that. It's kind of like your service profile in UCS. Copy this in. Or your service profile template. 
The next thing we're going to do is put in a NAT config. And we're really not doing any NAT in this world because I'm using my ASAV simply as a concentrator. So this rule is kind of just like a NAT bypass that you need to have. Copy it out. I won't get into all the boring math with you guys on it. If you want to do any sort of filtering between the VPN network and your core network on the ASAV, you can configure this leveraging this rule here. And then I'm going to do a follow-up video on the umbrella package. So we've got through these steps. So we've got through these steps so far. We deployed the ASAV, configured SSH, uploaded any connect package. We just configured the ASAV for any connect. And the last thing we need to do is set up outbound access. Well, I've created a follow-up video for you on configuring port forwarding on an MX, a Meraki firewall. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk through this here. Essentially, what we needed, to, what I did, is I created a port forwarding rule so that my outside public IP address was forwarded to my ASAV over port 443. So from my client, I'm calling my public IP address on my MX over port 443 and that's sending that down to the ASAV. That's kind of like one way you could do it. Maybe if you had one static IP or if it was at a branch. If you have multiple static IPs or public IP addresses, you could create a straight one-to-one -one NAT. Or maybe if you want to put it out on the outside itself, you could put a public IP address on it and lock it down and have it in its own public entity. So there's a few different ways you can present it. Again, in my situation here, I just did a simple port forward from my MX to my ASAV. So here, what I'm going to do, instead of hitting the ASAV from the public internet, I'm going to hit it from kind of the DMZ inside. So I'm going to connect to the outside interface of my ASAV VPN concentrator. And now we're establishing VPN connection. 